Another episode in the bag, man. I am just ecstatic about this new season. And before we get into anything else, y'all know we got to pray. And for this moment, I nominate Anthony to pray for this episode because I know he's a praying man. (laughs) I've been a praying man for the last two weeks. (laughs) (laughs) So, Anthony, can you bless us real quick? Of course, Lord God. I just want to say Thank you. Mm. Thank you for that person that's listening to this episode right now. Thank mm. you for that person that has been tuning in since yes. we started. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for this episode. This episode is going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. Let's bring our thoughts. Bring our perspective. Right. Bring our opinions. Mm-hmm. Most importantly, mm-hmm. let's always put God in the forefront. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Welcome to Top Shelf, where we seek truth, opinion, perspective, and we seek solutions. That's that's amazing. That, thank you so much, Anthony, for that anointing. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Shut you know what's up, funny? Shut up, bro. <laughs> what, what's, what's funny, Jeff? What you got? After we said amen, the top uh, the top show podcast of uh, so started running. <laughs> 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 Yo, it's Yo, a part. Bro, talk, I about it too. It's a part. It's a part of it now. It's a. It's, Yo, it's a part of that. Hey, you know, after, you know, in every episode, <laughs> right after we drop a prayer, let me tell you, that theme song comes on. That <laughs> like clockwork theme song. That t- like clockwork. Yo, oh, <laughs> let me tell you something. That'd be my day. So uh, let me let me start this conversation off like this. You right though, Jeff. Uh, for y'all, a question. Let's go back in the day. Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. Some Let, days I sit and wish I was a kid again. Uh, Back in the day. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. The three tenors. Let's get it. Uh, <laughs> so back in the days, back in the crib, uh, way back when, what was y'all, do y'all remember a superhero that y'all watched? Who was y'all favorite superhero when y'all was young? On Like cartoons. Who was y'all favorite? Mine was Batman. Batman. Can you tell me why? I don't know. I was just a huge Batman fan. I love Batman. Like when I was a kid, it was Batman and Superman. Mm-hmm. But so I have a funny story with the Superman part of it. Right. So I was a big Batman fan, but I was also a big Superman fan. Right. And so one day, I think I was like either four or five, right? Mm-hmm. So I had put a, I took like one of those um, bed sheets wrapped around my neck, right? And at the time, you know, we was living in the third floor. Marlboro Projects, right? Mm. And I literally thought that I could actually fly. Oh, God. So I stepped out front of the window, mm-hmm. was about to jump out the window. Oh, my God. Thinking I was actually Superman. And my mom saw me and she grabbed me so quick and dragged me right back into the crib. Um, Make sure that, because at this point, if that would have done that, I would have been like, the actual Superman, Christopher, Christopher Reeves. <laughs> um, but, mm-hmm. you know, and just be handicapped. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so it was crazy. So right after that, like they actually had ended up putting, ironically, these metal bars. Right. Um, in all of our windows. So <laughs> that instant would happen again. So that's where they came from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You make it matter worse that same day too. My aunt had gave me like $20. Mm-hmm. Right. And this was like 84, 85, right? Right. So that was a lot. Especially for a kid. Exactly. Like, yo, I was back lit. then. I was like, yo, I'm about to go to Toys R Us. I'm about to go in. Right. About to, woo, yo, woo, woo, woo. for those who don't yo, know, Toys R Us was that place. It was <laughs> that place. So I'm over here thinking like, I went from thinking I'm Superman to thinking I'm, you know, I was like Michael Jordan or or, or mm-hmm. whoever it was at that time. So I had like the twenty dollars in my hand. I'm doing like this little shaking bit. I'm about to cross somebody up, and I like they like fake like a jump shot, right? So when I did that. $20 actually f- flew out my hands and mm-hmm. went outside. Oh. The same way that I tried to jump out of them. Same wow. day. It was all happened the same day, bro. <laughs> and so I'm like, yo, I'm panicking at oh this my point. Oh, So we go outside. Bro. And so I'm, you know, like going to my mom. My eyes like, oh, you know, I threw the $20 outside. It was like, what is wrong with you? Free charge yeah. about the window. Now you're doing this. Wow. What's going Team on? too much. Let's just say that $20 was gone. You know so I mean? wait, let me get this straight. You was a suicidal superhero? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> 
I play, I play, I play. Pretty much. I play, pretty, pretty, I play. pretty much. No, we all had that. Uh, yeah. The thing was, <laughs> Jeff, we all had that uh, imagination when we was a kid, yeah. bro. Yeah. We really thought we could be those heroes that we saw on TV. And we tried to recreate it. My, with my whitey tighties on. <laughs> <laughs> Superman what, whitey tidies, yo. Word up. What about you, Eric? What, what superhero did you want to be? I think I wanted to be um, <clears throat> Spider Man. Spider Man, okay. that's my boy. You had, know what I'm saying? And why? I had Spider Man pre. I had, uh, I had, a, I had a whole collectible. Um, mm -hmm. Just how he like he was about the community. Mm. Um, I, think, I can see that that yeah. friendly neighborhood I, I, Spider Man. I, 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 I can see that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I could uh, like um, at that moment. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I was thinking about. Any more black uh, superheroes? But, Absolutely. But at that moment, yeah. Spider Man was definitely yeah my 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 to go to. I would say uh, for me that was like my dad uh, told me when I was younger. I I loved Batman beyond everything else. Like he was like I was ba Batman everything. You didn't jump out of the roof. Uh, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> yo, yo, you know uh, we only have two stories. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> You you jump and jump at the curb <laughs> real quick like like it would you wouldn't even have no aerial nothing <laughs> or, like our, our our buildings are not that big like it's not like Brooklyn <laughs> no not at all shoot you got to build it on top of another building <laughs> you know what I'm saying Brooklyn um no but uh Batman he said that Batman uh was my my guy and then when I but Batman cartoons were the best hands mm -hmm. down yes, we you know that Justice League was hands down comics uh as I got older. Uh, I think it was like the Power Rangers was my thing. Power Rangers. Okay. I really wanted to be the Blue Ranger. No, like, no, no, no. I, like, I gotta I change my thought, bro. Yo, <laughs> it was definitely the Power Rangers. <laughs> it was Power Rangers, Rangers bro. bro. It, it was that, straight that, that, up. That was before religiously. My time. That was before. <laughs> yeah, by the time Power Rangers, Rangers came out, I was like, I think going into high school, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. I watch it as an adult. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I have mean, no shame. Yeah. But I have no okay. shame. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you. Next topic. <laughs> <laughs> and I found out uh when I got to be the older Black Ranger that uh Batman's superpower. <laughs> Anthony shows up into the bedroom. <laughs> Power Ranger outfit. Yo, my super proud. Yo, you like coming into my bedroom, I see. Yeah, Yo, pause, bro, sir, nah, pause sir. this conversation, pause. sir. Yo. What are y'all talking about? No. Anthony said, there's Yo, a this whole conversation just went left. <laughs> Yo, sir, all I said was superheroes. Like, y'all turning this, this into some... Some other stuff. I don't even know. I technically know. had a cape through my wedding. You remember uh, that time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. I ain't even gonna lie. <laughs> Jeff, you just gotta see the wedding video. Uh, it was, Anthony did that. I ain't gonna lie. With my toes out and all that. I was a but ghost, man. I, I saw it firsthand. You know what I'm saying? He was a Jamaican superhero. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, um, man. James Brown was a superhero. You know what I'm saying? Uh, now, the reason why I wanted to be the Blue Ranger was because one, blue was mm. my favorite color. Okay. Okay. Two, uh, Billy was not only a ranger, he could fight, but he was smart. Mm. And I admired that because I'm like, not only are you a mind, but you had, you got hand. Like everybody else, the Black Ranger was cool, but like, I was like, Billy was like the one they went to, he was like, yo, oh, I got that figured out. This is technical. He solved that on that end. And then on another end, he like, I got all the hands y'all need. Mm -hmm. You know, Jason was great as a captain, the Red Ranger, the White Ranger, the Green Ranger was dope. But Billy was my favorite. Okay. Um, so let me ask y'all this. If you guys had a time machine, right? And you could go back and have a conversation with the younger Jeff. With the younger Anthony. I see where you're going with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like where you're going. If with you could this. have a conversation with them, what do you think that conversation would be about? Ooh. That's a good question. That's a great question, bro. Mm. I hey, look, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, it will start in high school. Mm. Um, I just wanted to belong. Mm. And I realized that as time progressed in regards to my character of who I am and things of that nature and what I struggle with sometimes. In high school, I just wanted to belong. Right. So I will go to parties or parties at times where I'm supposed to be in school. Mm -hmm. um, I did not take education serious, mm -hmm. but I did, my environment didn't allow me to also take education serious because they would tell you, hey, if you get a 55, you can pass. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was in the era where it's like, yo, 55, cool, no problem. Mm -hmm. Then I realized as time progressed, okay. mm -hmm. 
I needed education to get to the next level. Mm-hmm. And also because I didn't have the tools, resource, and access yeah, absolutely. Um, to navigate college, I didn't do so well in college. Like I literally failed my first year um, because I didn't have that resource. So I'll say for me, my younger self was really um, high school. Right. So you would, so the conversation would be <clears throat> pertaining to education. Correct. And what do you feel like that pep talk would look like? Do you feel like you would be telling your younger self like, hey, you need to get your stuff together because this education is going to be the key to your future? Um, I think the pep talk would be more of the parents were right. Because mm. they will always pour into me that um, they just came from America. They came to America right. to give me a better life. Mm. And to understand that perspective emotionally right. And um, emotionally, mm-hmm. I think I would have took it more serious to saying, wow, my parents could have stayed in Jamaica, but they didn't. They saw America as a better life for his son. Mm-hmm. And I didn't take it serious. Mm-hmm. When he took out money, the loan and things of that nature for college, I thought that's what he's supposed to do. Right. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know that I wasn't even ready for college. But I mm-hmm. went because that's the trajectory mm-hmm. of what you're supposed to do. Mm. So the conversation would be me was get your shit together. Mm. Like real talk. I love it. Because like we always talk about, you're trying to protect the future of you. Right, right. And do you feel like the younger Anthony or Tony, I should say, would be susceptible to the message that you're trying to display? Nah. You, you don't feel like nah, you're here? Like, I just want, y'all really just wanted to have fun. Mm. And anything I did, I just wanted to have the best time of my life. Right. Um, I, and I didn't care about if there was a tomorrow. I just care about the memories. Mm. I'm still like that, but I'm more on, it's more reserved. I'm, I'm going to start calling you Good Time Tony. <laughs> Good Time Tony? <laughs> that's his uh, uncle yeah, name. That's so his uncle it's name. real talk. When <laughs> Anthony becomes an uncle, that's going to be his <laughs> Your name, good time, Tony. No, real talk. And that's a really great question because I think about it all the time. It's like, mm. yo, I just wanted to be, have the experience, have a good time. Mm-hmm. And wherever it was a party, I was there. That's great. So that's great. I think I wanted to, and yes, I want to talk to that person that's maybe not a school person, mm-hmm. but also learn how to navigate education. Don't le- learn how to navigate education in a faster pace. What do you feel like uh, the the younger you was lacking in one word? Resource. Mm. Fire. Fire. Uh, so then I want to shift over to my boy Jeff. Jeff, this conversation with your younger self, we're digging deep. Um, what do you feel like uh, you would tell the younger you? I would tell my younger self Really understand the power of money, finances, credit. Love it. That's that's something that I would definitely go back and tell my younger self. That. Right. Because when I was younger, I didn't really understand how powerful credit was. So, you know, like a lot of times once you turn 18, um, you start getting like all these credit card offers in the mail. Absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm. And for me, I'm thinking, so, you know, I remember getting my first credit card. It's like, yo, I'm lit. The first thing I bought was a pair of Tim's. <laughs> Charge it to the game. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, yo, I ain't got to pay this. And then I got like a Macy's card. Oh, yeah. It's like, yo, I'm lit. <laughs> I'm buying fat form. Well, you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, that, that's, that, that's what was in back then. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yo, I'm lit. And so I'm buying these things. I'm 18, 19 years old. And I just wanted just to really spend. And I'm like, Man, I'll, I'll, I'll pay this later. So, I, you know, I started off like kind of making little payments. But then, like, Man, ain't that serious. I'd rather spend that money somewhere else. And so I didn't realize the importance of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, my parents, they didn't really talk about finances like that to me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, no. You know, they would say like, yeah, save and things like that. But it was, there was really no in-depth conversation, or at least the power of that American dollar. 
the mm. power of the credit system yeah. mm. and how it could make or break you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so that's something if I had to go back and have a conversation with my younger self when I was 18 years old, was that just learn how to save at the young age, mm -hmm. learn how to, how powerful credit is. Mm -hmm. And if you start learning how to manage your credit at a very young age, mm -hmm. you can, you have so much buying power when you get older. You wow. know what I'm saying? You could buy your first home at a young age. You know what I'm saying? You could buy your first car with a low interest rate. Um, and not only that, just look, once you understand the power of credit, you just mm -hmm. manage your money, period, better. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you, you're learning how to save instead of just going out there and spending on partying and buying clothes. Mm -hmm. Things are- That's what we knew, bro. Mm -hmm. And exactly. That's, Yo, all, that's, all, that's, that's all what we, we knew. knew. Absolutely. That's like, like what Anthony was saying. I would do the same thing. I'll, I just really wanted to just go out there mm -hmm. and have a good time. I was always out there partying. Right. You know what I'm saying? I was cool with the promoters. It, it was all about being- Being seen. Being seen. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's how it was. Because during that time, I was living in um, Orlando. Mm -hmm. And me and my crew, you know, me and my crew, we just go out. You know what I'm saying? So we was always out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, partying. You know what I'm saying? Go to class during the week. But same thing, I wasn't taking it that seriously. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and it wasn't because I didn't have the resource. Right. I didn't have the discipline. Uh, that's that's what it was for me. I wasn't disciplined or not on the things that really mattered or or what was more important. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, you know, you could go out there and have fun, have a good time, but take care of your responsibilities too at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. if you're not able to juggle both, you gotta sacrifice one. And, right. and some I would say instead of sacrifice, sacrifice. Don't sacrifice your education. Sacrifice going out. Mm -hmm. Get your education first. You know what I'm saying? You know, save your money first because you have plenty of time to really enjoy life. And you'll be, actually be able to enjoy life much more right. by having financial buying power, by, you know what I'm saying, getting a great education or just knowing exactly what you want to be. Because mm -hmm. I was confused. Mm -hmm. First, I wanted to be like a computer programmer. Then I was like computer engineer. Then it was actually, first was psychology. I actually wanted to be a psychologist. Really? I really wanted to I be a psychologist. Right. Yeah, I really did. And But mm -hmm. what stopped me was that I was listening I to everybody. I see that. Mm -hmm. I was listening to everybody. And that's the other thing I would tell my younger self. Don't right. listen to everybody. Because I really had my heart and passion in that. Mm -hmm. But I remember my aunt, and you know, she was the same with mouse and I couldn't do it. She just was telling me, it's like, you know, it's more than just getting your badge. You're going to have to go, you know, get your masters and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that kind of like, scared me a little bit and I took it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I took it in the sense like she was saying like this is not for you. Mm -hmm. But she wasn't saying that way. She was saying saying it in the sense of just know that it, it requires uh, uh, an More. extended amount of education right. in order for you to get into this career. Mm -hmm. Right? And so that kind of like made me go to different directions because I took it the wrong way. Again, it wasn't so much that I didn't have the resource. I just wasn't disciplined enough during yeah. that time if, I, if I'm going to be transparent and be very honest. Mm -hmm. And so that's the conversation I have. Like, stick to what you really believe in or what you want to do. If you have your heart set on, like, this is what I want to be when I grow up. This is what I want to go to school for. And you have a passion for it. Stick to it. You know what I'm saying? Know what credit is. Know what your fi what financial um, power is financial power in the sense of having good credit, learning how to save, knowing about stocks and bonds, all these things at a young age. Because it's amazing how you'll be surprised, like how many kids at the age of 16, 17, 18 years old, mm -hmm. they know this information. Right. You know what I'm saying? They know this information. And even back then, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Much more now because of the power of social media Absolutely. and the internet and things like that. But even back then, you know what I'm saying? Back in 98, 97, 99, that information was there. You know what I'm saying? But it was just that I just wasn't, I didn't receive that information. It didn't get to you fast. And I didn't really pay attention to that information. Absolutely. No, I, uh, do you feel like your younger self would be receptive, Jeff? If I'm honest, probably not. Mm -hmm. Because my, my, my mindset was different. It was all about girls. It was all about partying again. Mm -hmm. It was about just, oh, just kind of just living Living life. Yeah, just li li living life. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because my parents didn't really put pressure on me like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they was like, go to school, do what you got to do. But my parents was chill. You know what I'm saying? They were cool. They were the cool parents. Mm -hmm. And 
and this kind of goes, you know, um, it, 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 there was just kind of like, like I said, there, was, there wasn't a push. I'll just put mm-hmm. it that way. There wasn't a strong push. And that's kind of strange growing up in a Haitian household. So for our listeners, anybody who's Haitian, you know, growing up in a Haitian household, they have like these three saying, these, uh, the three L's, l'école, la caille, l'église. Basically what that means is school, church, uh, wait, school, church, and house, right? So you kind of grow up with that type of mentality. Be home. You got to go to school, get your education. Got to. If, if, if you're a woman, you got to be like a nurse yeah, <laughs> or maybe I, a lawyer. You have to. Uh, <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you're a guy, you got to be a doctor <laughs> or mm-hmm. an engineer. That's like it. it's, that's, that's the stereotypical mm-hmm. um, dream mm-hmm. that Haitian parents have for their kids, right? And then right. obviously go to church. My mm-hmm. parents wasn't like that. They right. didn't, they never put that kind of pressure on, on me and my siblings though? at all. So my dad, he was a, um, he was the head of maintenance for this um, company that made hearing aids. Mm. And my mom, she was a manager for the same company as well. Cause they both worked at the same company. Okay. Um, so cool. for them, you know, like, you know, they, 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 they did, they did well, you know what I'm saying? You know, they did well, you know, especially more towards the later years of, 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 of life. my life. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? We didn't really, we struggled when we were younger, but once I got kind of like to like my teenage years, it wasn't that bad. You know what I'm saying? Like my mm-hmm. parents were able to kind of like provide us with a middle class type of life. You know what I'm saying? Cause they work hard. My dad, he was the type of person. He'll work two, three jobs to make sure that we're good. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he, he made those sacrifices. Yeah. And I think also because of that, they may not have known some of that, you know, information uh-huh. or at least know how to translate it to me yeah. and my siblings. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of struggled with that. You know what I'm saying? I think that's another problem or thought process that we should talk about Mm -hmm. is not knowing how to translate the language Mm -hmm. to the next generation Mm -hmm. and keep on translating that language. Right. It's because it's a language in regards to money. Money is a language. And once you understand the language Mm -hmm. of money, Mm -hmm. your whole, your whole life changes. Everything changes. Like say, for example, if I'm a doctor, I'm a financial advisor Mm -hmm. and my child is in the living room and she sees daddy talking to five other financial advisors, the language my daughter and my son would know mm-hmm. is going to be on next level. Yeah. Actually. They're expected or let me not say expected. They will have the language. Mm. If there is their choice to use it. Right. But they have the language because it's in the environment. It becomes part of their DNA. Right. So I want to go back to what you were saying in regards of discipline. I think we were disciplined, but we were disciplined to, to our environment. So meaning like party was our environment. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, going out was our environment. Mm-hmm. Because our environment wasn't so big on education right. or the resource. Yes, they were big on education, like going to school, mm-hmm. but it's more than just going to school. Absolutely. Yeah. It's ninth grade having those extra after school programs. Mm-hmm. But it was canceled because of no budget. Or mm. on the weekends, mm-hmm. having those STEM programs, but you couldn't find them because mommy had to go to work and they were way in Harlem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. those resources and access wasn't given to us. But what was given to us mm-hmm. is like, yo, yo, your mom not home? Well, let's go have a party. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And you knew when your mom was not home. Everybody knew. Yeah. yeah. It, what cup party was real? Oh, I, those thirty seconds down. was real. Oh, no, no, never mind. Straight, <laughs> straight up and down. It was. It that was real. A whole another conversation. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, so it was real it, in the field. Like, it, it, it's back into that conversation. It's like yeah. you telling your younger self mm-hmm. all these things, but yeah. is the environment right. going to be able to build this person? Absolutely. And um, Fred, what would you tell a, your younger self? That's really good so I love what. Anthony said when he was uh, when he was talking about his younger self about education, and I love what you were speaking on when you t- spoke about money. For me, that would be that you possess um, everything you need to get where you need to go. Mm. The main thing is to trust God to get there. Uh, I I think I think the biggest thing is. The moments where I weren't wasn't trusting and I allowed myself to get distracted, 
I got outside of it. You know, uh, there was, uh, along with Jeff, like when I was from middle school, I, I wanted to get into counseling and therapy. I wanted to, yeah, into the, into that lane in the same lane. Like I remember I used to write all over my books and stuff like that. Like I want to be a therapist. I want to help the world and minds and stuff like that. No, for real? Yeah, for real, for real. And um, just because it fascinated me wow. because I didn't grow up uh, or, like going to therapy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't grow up in that mindset. I would see therapists in the context of TV, you know, people sitting on a couch getting interviewed by their therapist. So that was like my mind state. I didn't see acting. I didn't see comedy. I didn't see any of this. Honest to God, I didn't know where it would get me um, until I hit 11th grade. And then when I hit 11th grade, I, I kept seeing like all these things like, oh, audition here, audition now. This is a play and this is a, a project and, and uh, definitely come and audition. So the first play I auditioned for was Aesop's Fables in 11th grade. Okay. And as for anybody that doesn't know, Aesop's Fables was like those like little simple stories, like the tur- tortoise and the hare, those mm. those old stories and stuff like that. Um, and the thing was was like I had an idea. I was like, yo, I want to get the part of the of the narrator. I just want to be the narrator. That's all I want to be. You know what I'm saying? I get that narrating part, and it is. And I, uh, they told me somebody had, had already had that part, so they was like audition for this other one. You know, and I was like. What am I doing? I, I work on the yearbook staff. What am I doing? Audition. I don't even like being in front of people. Like, what, what am I doing? But it, something just kept pushing me forward. Like, even when I wanted to stop, I didn't like, I was like, I'm kind of excited about this. I don't know yeah. why, but I'm, I feel like I'm supposed to do this. So then I did it. Um, I did, I did, I did the role. And then like people start uh, dropping out of the play. And there was other people that uh, had, got disqualified because of grades. So it's kind of like, you know, if you are a basketball player, if your grades ain't doing so well, they sit you down yeah. for a little bit. And then when you get them back up, you can play. Same thing with the acting department, performing arts. So they was like, Fred, I know it's hard. We, 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 uh, the person that wanted to be that we had for the narrator part, uh, they dropped out. Uh, and it was because of grades and stuff like that. Um, what they had to, because we want them to get their grades back up, but they won't be in enough time. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, dang, that's the part I originally wanted, but I'm already paying this other part. And we was like, okay, you could play multiple parts. I was like, what? How that going to work? Because I, I didn't memorize this part. What you mean, another part? They was like, yeah, you can do it. We believe in you. And they just kept pushing. Mm-hmm. My uh, Miss Mickey, who was my, uh, wow. shout out to her. Cause she Y'all was just like, Mickey. yeah, Miss Mickey. Like she was always like, she would just started pushing Mr. Hallman. They were like, you can do it. You got it. And then another person dropped out. Gave me another role. And I was like, and it was short. It was a short joint. But then I'm like, so y'all want me to play three? That's what I said. You had a monologue slam. That's what I said. It was crazy. I was like, okay, cool. You was Boom. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I was Roscoe at the door. You know what I'm saying? So... Then, so I'm playing three roles now, and it's the first production I've ever been in where I had this many roles. I've never done anything like this up until my, in my academic career. Next thing you know, show, show time comes. I'm nervous as hell. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sweating. They're like, you're about to have a heart attack. Uh, and I'm like, I'm the first one on stage because I'm the narrator now. Mm-hmm. And I got three other roles. I mean, two other roles. So here I am. I'm like, the first one to go out. And then all of a sudden, I'm, I go out in the dark because you know that light going to hit you and they come up, the curtain open, it's on. Curtain open, light hit me. I was like, what's my lines? At first, like in my mind. And then that light really came on me. And I was like, hey, I didn't see you there. Like, and I fell into it like that. And I was like, God, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is, the, I don't know how I did that. Like, I legit don't know how I did that. Next year, my senior year, I got more into the performing arts department. I was like, forget psychology. And I auditioned for a musical. Now, mind you, I can't sing. So I'm auditioning for Footloose, the, mu- the musical. I got the lead role. 
in the musical and I'm like hold on y'all know I can't sing this nigga got about at least about five songs like <laughs> they, I'm they like the, I'm the like, light skin eyes it's like you'll be okay yeah, yeah, yeah we'll be alright and then so I did it we had an amazing time mm. best time I've ever had uh, and Anthony like yourself bro I got to my senior year and I didn't have scholarships knocking at my door I didn't know what I was gonna do bro I, li- I legit, like the counselors, they got to me, but it was too late. And they were like, yo, we don't know what to do. Your grades ain't as good as they need to be for a scholarship. So we don't know what to tell you. Oh. And I got there right. and I was like, oh, snap. Mm-hmm. And literally, Anthony, you know what I did? Nothing, bro. I didn't do anything. And one of my teachers re- reached out to me, my musical teacher, her name is Miss Lash. She reached out and said, Fred, what are you doing at the high school? I said, I don't know. She said, what the hell? What do you mean you don't know? Have you talked to your counselors? I was like, they, they couldn't help me. And then she said, hey, you, you going to college. And I'm like, how? I ain't got no money. Uh, I'm raising the projects, man. Like, I ain't got no money. My mom ain't got no money. We ain't got no money. And then she was like, you're going to audition for a performance grant. And I'm like, what? And she said, for this junior college. I was like, what? She's like, this is, this is a start for you somewhere. I don't know where God is going to take you, but this is the start. I auditioned for it, the grant, and I got it. And I was able to go to college for free. Amen. Yeah. And uh, I, got a, I was on a performance grant for two years uh, at a junior college uh, back home in Kansas. Uh, and the last year, the program switched, and I was able to do forensics. Um, which is like speech and debate, uh, like combined or whatever. Um, and I finished out with my associates in theater and, uh, yeah, it was amazing, man. It's a, been an amazing journey. I auditioned for a school in Kansas. Uh, I mean, well, it was a school for here in New York and I got it again. Another thing, like, I'm like, God is just opening these doors. I know this was like a long winded answer, nah, nah, nah. No, 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 but, nah. <laughs> but the, this is, the, I'm, I'm learning something new and I, I yeah. just had a thought, but I was, yeah. but the, but the point was, uh, to answer your question is that I had it all along. It wasn't what I thought it was. Like I never, in my mind, I was like, I don't want to go to school to become a lawyer just to find out I was supposed to be a painter the entire time. Yeah. Never. Oh, I don't, man. I don't never. And That's then true. I got, I'm like, I'm, I'm drowning in freaking bills. Like the, you know, these freaking student loans. And I'm thinking about how I'm going to pay that, but I'm, I'm passionate about painting and selling paintings and being in museums. And, uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm trying to do a new Renaissance, but I don't, you know what I'm saying? I, mm-hmm. I never was like, I'm like, no, I always did have that in my state. Like, I don't want to be drowning in debt, like crazy, mm-hmm. you know? And, yeah, if I no. if I had that conversation with my younger self, I would say, "Hey, you got it already. You what's, have it." What's your one word? My one word would definitely be discipline, because with this craft, you have to be disciplined. You have to practice. You have to read scripts. You have to uh, stay sharp. You have to uh, watch other people do acting. You have to you have to do all these different things to the keep craft. yourself. It, that's what it is. It is. Point blank, period. It's a skill, man. Yep. Basketball players play basketball. They go to practice. Michael Jordan, I love watching him because he is the GOAT, but I love watching him over and over because he, his discipline was unlike no other. It was unfreaking match. That's how he excelled. That's a fact. So I think in life, what you love mm-hmm. becomes discipline. I'm learning that more mm-hmm. and more. That's a fact. Like when I go to work, because I love kids and I really want to see my black and brown um, children, mm-hmm. kids, students succeed, I go hard. Mm-hmm. I go hard to the next level. Right. Even when you say, quote unquote, you don't have money, mm-hmm. I find the money. Because when I, what I want to leave the world is mm-hmm. that child had a resource. That child had access. Mm-hmm. That child had information. Absolutely. You, you, know what, you know what that is? That's your gift. God gives us all a gift. And what happens is sometimes profit, we, don't, right here. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't... We don't utilize those gifts. So mm-hmm. when, you, when you're out there like 
I, I love what Fred was saying. Like, I didn't want to go to school okay. to become an attorney to find out I'm supposed to be a painter. That was mm-hmm. real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's real. And mm-hmm. a lot of times that happens. We'll choose careers that we actually have no business being in because yeah. that's not our gift. That's not what God is calling us to you be. You become trapped. No, yeah. you, be, you become trapped. Yeah, yeah, you could be an attorney. You could be a doctor. You could be a nurse. You could be an yeah. engineer. But you could start hating your job. You may not yeah. even really be a good one. Absolutely. Because that's not really your gift. Right. So what Anthony was saying, I love what he was saying. It's like, because he loved kids. Right. That's his gift. Absolutely. So because that's his gift, yeah, he's mm-hmm. going to have days it could be a little overwhelming. Fact. It could be a little mm-hmm. stressful. But he's going to go hard regardless. Pause. Absolutely. Because why? It's his gift. He has mm-hmm. a passion for it. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? We have a passion for something. It doesn't feel like work. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You're just, it's almost like a hobby. You mm-hmm. enjoy what you're doing mm-hmm. because you are basically doing what you've been gifted to do. Absolutely. And I believe God is going to push you forward into it. Most definitely. Every time any, it, you could stop, tr- like people could discourage you and try to make you stop thinking about it. No matter what they do, I believe that the God in you is always going to keep you on it. Yeah. Just, just like your uh, gift is comedy mm-hmm. your gift is to be an actor mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like anthony could be like you know i'm gonna be an actor i could go up there and be i'm gonna be an actor you know what i'm saying you know, man Ernest, shout out to Ernest. you know he could be like i'm gonna be an actor but that may not that's not our calling mm-hmm. that's your calling mm-hmm. that's your gift so stay in your lane you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying so <laughs> exactly so that gift that you have it it, it, it stays in your mind, you're going to wake up right, with right. it in your mind. You're going to go to bed thinking about it. You know, even if you try to stray away from it, mm-hmm. it comes back full circle. I really do believe that. I it really, really does. I, I right. really, truly believe that your purpose, the gift, the gift that mm-hmm. God has given you for society, the world, right, to give it back. literally comes full circle. Mm-hmm. And uh, it might not come to you. Right. It might come to your kids. Uh, but someone... In your DNA, right? Your DNA, your DNA is equal to purpose because that's what God has given you, right? So it's a domino effect. Mm -hmm. God, your DNA, Mm -hmm. your purpose. That's why you gotta know what your purpose is, man. And and I think it change it changes you. Not think I know it changes you along the way because you learn so much stuff about yourself through acting. I've learned that I can accept disappointment Mm -hmm. better than I thought I could because. Me growing up in a single parent household, it was hard, bro. Mm-hmm. I was disappointed a lot, but it, it's like, yo, auditions, you're going to get rejected, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, you know. Are you competing. The, and you competing against other people. You got to be, you have to be hungry for it. You definitely got hungry. You got to have a hunger. And the same in, in ind- industry, you can't just be acting. It just has to be in any industry. You want to be an NBA player? You got to be hungry for it. You got to get up before everybody else. You got to go practice. You got to stay fit. You got to do all these things in education. You got to read good. books. You have to learn. You have to teach yourself. You, you have to talk to and listen to kids. You, you have to uh, talk to other people, parents. You have to get all of that knowledge that you need in the medical industry. You have to stay up to date. You have to uh, pra- do those guidelines that... Uh, the CDC is is saying, of course, you 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 have to choose that. You have to choose to be in the know. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Especially in the now. They're so go to hospitals, maybe if that's where where you're going. Like, own up on it. Educate yourself beyond the meetings and all of that stuff. Whatever you're into, and you have a passion for, you got to study it, bro. So, Fred, I have a question. Uh-huh. What would you say? So I know we, we've asked a question, mm-hmm. or you asked a question actually, mm-hmm. as far as what, what what would we tell our younger self? What would you tell your future self? My future self? Wow. For where I am right now, hmm. that I would just encourage my future self, honestly. Because I know it, he is a father. He will be a father. He will be a husband. Um, it's just like, it's a journey. Just, l- just letting him know every step to enjoy. Every, like, I love what the conversation we've been having in, in, con- in um, our episodes. Like, it's all a journey. Enjoy the moments more. Mm. 
sit in those moments. Really love those moments. Spend more time with your wife. Spend more time with your kids. Don't take those moments for granted because we can. We can be in those moments and be like, oh, yeah, this, this is what this is. You know, I was talking to my wife about this morning. We were saying, like, neither one of our families have had family reunions. We just long for those, bro. Like, I would, I've been to other people's family reunions, but I've never had one with my family. And I think I would encourage, I'm like, if you haven't did it already, have that family reunion, you know, because you need it. Your wife needs it. Your legacy needs it. You know what I'm saying? And enjoy and really, really pour into your family, help your family. As much as you can, you know, as much as you are able. If you can't help them in a capacity, give them the information to get there. You know what I'm saying? Um, what about you, Ant? What would you tell yours? We'll go right back to you real mm-hmm. quick. Yeah. Future self, one word. Future self, one word. Um, I would say the one word would be um, outstanding. That's the only word I can really think of. Just outstanding. And everything that he does, you know, a phenomenal man of God and a phenomenal, uh, outstanding family. <laughs> no, I get it. That's it. I think for me, um, what do I have to tell my future self? Mm-hmm. It's something that you taught me, Fred, and I want to give you a flower for t- teaching me this, is, and also you, Jeff, the combination. Don't overthink, but enjoy every memory. Mm. I love that. And what about you, Jeff? Uh, what about you? What would you tell your future self? What I would tell my future self is you belong there. Mm-hmm. This is uh, where, this is where, you, this is where you're supposed fire, to be. That's fire, bro. Right that's there. fire. You belong there. You belong there. I love that. Wait, and I got one last question. Like, So in the beginning, that we started this conversation about heroes, right? I'm like, who is your younger hero? Who's your hero now? My hero? Who's your hero now? And it doesn't have to be like, it's, of course, it's not a cartoon answer. It's like, but who do you look at as your hero now? Mm. Your own hero? Yeah. Mm. Tom Tony? All right. That's <laughs> fire. I love it though. Me versus me. That's fire. Okay. I'm not in a competition with myself. Yeah. But every day I want to be better. Yeah. I love it, man. Wow. Every environment I, I step it. in. Wow. Now that I want to be the king. <laughs> no, you are the but king. I, right. Pour that into me. Affirmation. <laughs> pour that, <laughs> pour that <laughs> affirmation into me. That. Pour that, that into me. <laughs> now, nah, definitely me. Um, I think I'm my best hero. Yeah. Because I can't be a hero to somebody else mm-hmm. if I don't start with myself. Right. So that's more important for me. Right. So I would say me. Who's your hero, Dad? I would say my dad. I love it. I would say, my, and the reason why I say my dad is, um, when I look at my dad now, when I look at his journey, my dad wasn't perfect, right? And most heroes, if not all heroes, they're not perfect. Absolutely. Mm. Come on. You know what I'm saying? They get praised one minute, they get right. criticized the next minute. Yeah. And you know, when I, when I look at my relationship with my dad from the time that I was younger, even now, mm-hmm. is when I was younger, you know, we... Bump heads. But now we have an amazing relationship. And I seen how my dad was able to mm-hmm. transform, become such a, a compassionate, um, really mm-hmm. understanding not only a, a father, but a grandfather as well. Mm-hmm. And the sacrifices, the high level sacrifices that he's made, like he was not above doing whatever he needed to do legally <laughs> to make sure that we were good. And okay. so when I look at that, I only could pray that I could be half of what my dad. Um, my hero, uh, I was thinking about this because I was like, should I, is this broad or is this general? I'm like, and one person just kept coming up. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, my, my hero is my brother. Mm-hmm. Oh, my older brother, Wes. Shout out to Wes. <laughs> out to Reason Wes. being is, uh, I don't, you guys probably don't know this. You guys were both at my wedding. and. Uh, the ceremony. Um, so the night before the wedding, he 
uh, invited me over to his hotel to stay because me, you know, I didn't want to see my wife before the wedding. So she stayed at our apartment. And so we, me, my sister, he bought, he got us a hotel room, hotel rooms and stuff like that. My brother. So I stayed in the room uh, with my brother and they only gave us <laughs> one bed in this room that they, that we got. Right. Mm-hmm. And then my brother was like, Yo, son, I was like, let's just do it like we did back in the day. Head to foot, head to foot. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, right? And this bed was huge. And uh, my brother said to me, he was like, listen, tomorrow is like the most important day of your life. You need the rest, all the rest in the world. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot on your mind, a lot of different things going on. He's like, listen, we didn't have a sofa in our room or anything. It was just the bed and the TV. And he was like, I'm going to sleep on the floor. Because I know that tomorrow is your day. And I want to do everything in my power to make your day best day. the best. You know? And he... Salute. And I was just like... And I was like... When I retold told that to my wife, it, it, I like start crying because I was just like, you don't understand how humble that is. Facts. It's like... Fact. Cause I was, I kept trying to. I was like, bro, like just, just, just sleep on this other side, like head to foot. My brother is six five. You know what I'm saying? A big dude. So I'm just like, just like on this other side. He said, no, no, this is your day tomorrow, bro. This is for you. I love you, man. So he he said he he just slept on the floor, bro. He got a blanket, slept on the floor. And my brother's my hero because he's an amazing father to my nephew. And he Absolutely. is just always been consistent in everything. Everything he's doing is amazing chef, amazing in his career. And I just love who he is. So shout out to Gerald Clemens, AKA Wes. Uh, I love you, bro. And you definitely are my hero. <laughs> wow. Wow. Another great episode, man. If you are listening, just think about the people around you. Who's your hero? Um, and start like letting them know, hey, hey, thank you. <laughs> no, it goes a long way. Just tell those people that's a hero, thank you. And don't forget to subscribe. All right. Have a good day. Have a great week.